The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K is made for video. So I've had this camera for a little bit over two months and I would say I've used it for about 20 to 25 different video projects and I couldn't be happier with the camera. The 6K is physically a little bit bigger in terms of um, body size, it's a little bit longer than the 4K. And one of the main differences is that the 6K has a super 35 millimeter sensor versus the 4K that's got the micro four thirds sensor. Basically with the camera sensor being slightly larger than the 4K camera, uh, it just means that the sensor is able to gather a little bit more light and read uh, more information. And the other thing is that it's only like 700 or 800 bucks more expensive than the Pocket 4K and it's just incredible. So before we jump into the pros and cons of the 6K, if you're a filmmaker and if you need some free filmmaking assets, I have a link down below, so make sure to check that out. All right, let's do the pros. Point number one, this camera is super lightweight compared to some other cinema cameras out there. Um, it's so lightweight that I can take this and fit it on my Ronin S2 right here and it functions perfectly. Right now I have my 18 to 35 lens on the camera which is my go-to lens for most of my shoots and on some occasions I have to grab my 50 to 100 millimeter Sigma art lens to get more of the detail shots, the close-ups and if I need a second camera um, I use that lens as well. Um, but there's many other lenses out there, you know, the pro being that it's an EF mount, so you can take any of your Canon lenses and throw them on the 6K if you're going from, you know, shooting C300, C200s and wanting to shift to black magic, all your lenses still fit. You know, you don't have to worry about getting a mount or like a Metabones that's gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks. And I just pretty much explained point number two, which is uh, the camera having an EF mount versus the 4K having a micro four thirds mount which is okay, there's some incredible lenses out there for the camera, it's just that, you know, if you used to shoot on a Canon or some other um, body that only took EF mount lenses, you know, you can just keep those lenses, throw them on here, and not have to worry about getting a Metabones adapter that's gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks. And then my third point is just the image quality that comes from this camera. You know, you can shoot in RAW 12-bit or ProRes 10-bit, and your image just looks incredible. You know, with 13 stops of dynamic range, the colors in this camera are incredible. You know, they're realistic, they're vibrant, and they're very flexible in post. So whatever you shoot in log or raw mode, you know, you can totally tweak um, everything in post. Uh, my previous camera, my Sony camera, only shot in 8-bit, and the coloring that footage can be really difficult sometimes but I haven't had an easier time with any other camera than this camera. Uh, you know, coloring the footage, um, super easy, throwing a Rec. 709 that just brings all the vibrance and all the colors back to your image. And here are a couple of clips that I think the colors look pretty awesome, so check them out. Okay, so I have quite a few more cons with this camera than pros, but I just love this camera so much. But I also wanna be fair and also give you guys my honest opinion on some of the things that I don't like about the pocket camera. So here we go. So point number one um, being the screen on the back. You know, the screen is amazing. It's like literally the size of my iPhone 12 mini and um, it's really cool that I can just look at the back of the screen and check for sharpness, you know, check for zebra and, you know, all change all my settings. But the con is that the screen is just stuck to the camera. You can't flip it, you can't turn it, you can't do anything with it. So when you're operating on a gimbal or let's say if you're trying to do a shot that's a little higher, you need to have some kind of off-screen monitor 
some kind of live feed um, that will show you what the shot looks like uh, to make sure your colors are good, you know, zebra's good, all that stuff. So I wish that this camera had a screen, and I know there's a screen you can buy online, but that's gonna cost like 300 bucks. I wish it would just come with the camera. Point number two being that the 6K camera can only shoot up to 50 frames per second. Now, 50 frames versus 60 frames per second is not that different, but I wish that there were some, you know, higher frame rates that I could shoot with this camera. Like, you know, if there was 120 frames per second, 200 frames per second, even if it was, you know, maybe in 4K or 2K, but unfortunately, um, we're stuck with 50 frames per second. And I love how the slow-mo footage looks um, from this camera, but I also wish there were some higher frame rates I can shoot with. And then point number three is that this camera literally has no autofocus functions. So there's no continuous autofocus. The only autofocus function that works maybe one out of you know, five times is a little button on the back that just basically focus, focuses on the center point of the shot. You can't really tell it to focus on somewhere else in the frame. All it does, it just takes a few seconds to focus and the few, you know, the focus is always in and out, in and out, in and out, and then it finds focus sometimes. So I definitely wouldn't rely on this camera if you're looking to purchase something with autofocus um, capabilities, like, you know, a new Sony camera or one of Canon's cameras. Um, but that hasn't been much of an issue for me. I wish there was an autofocus thing because I've had scenarios where I could rely on it. Um, but for now, we're stuck with manual focus. And then another thing that I wish uh, the Pocket 6K had was maybe one or two more little red light indicators while you're recording. Um, just for you to know that, you know, you're still recording. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're shooting an interview or if you're on your gimbal um, and I can't view my screen, you know, because I'm shooting a higher shot or going for like a suitcase mode, it's hard for me to know if I'm still recording unless I like lean over and have to look at this indicator light right here or have to look at my screen and look for this little red button and make sure that I'm still rolling. So I wish maybe there was something up here in this area or like somewhere on top of the camera when I press the record button, I'm able to kind of, you know, know that I'm still recording and that I don't have to be worried that I'm not, you know, because I've had, you know, scenarios where this is uh, with an SSD that I bought and um, it just wasn't working. Like it wasn't uh, recording any of the data, any of the footage that I was trying to record into it. And then one time it started recording and I was like, oh, okay, I wonder what happened. It, I hope it got fixed. And then I just kept recording and then there's a couple of stops um, during, the sh uh, during the shooting. And then when I went to check the footage, there was um, no evidence of any of the things that I had recorded, even though I thought I was recording because it was working earlier. So one of the things that would have helped was just to have some kind of indicator light up here to kind of remind me that, oh, I'm rolling or, you know, because if I'm rolling and it's not recording to the SSD, the camera automatically doesn't roll. The last thing that I wish the Pocket 68 camera had was IBIS, uh, in-body image stabilization. You know, working with Sony cameras and GH5S and some other Canon cameras, um, sometimes the lenses even come with some IBIS. Shooting handheld with this camera um, doesn't always look the best just because there's no sort of image stabilization um, in, the, in the camera body. So it'd be helpful um, to have some kind of you know, stabilization going in the camera for you know, filmmakers who like to shoot handheld and wanna have some really good fluid movements um, when they're doing handheld you know, shoots or if it's a follow dock or something like that to where it doesn't feel you know jittery or feel like you're just shooting on a DSLR camera that doesn't have you know that function. So I think that would definitely help 
with the filmmaking experience if this camera had some kind of stabilization. But maybe in the upcoming updates, there's gonna be something that comes out. With all that said, I have loved shooting with this camera and I look forward to using it for many other projects, you know, in the upcoming year. And I've just been really happy with the results uh, so far. And I just wanted to share it with you guys um, some of the footage that I've shot over the past two months. And to let you guys know, you know, it's a good camera, but if you have any other cameras that you think are better around this price point, please comment below, give me your honest feedback, and I would love to hear that. Well, thanks again for taking some time to watch this video, and I hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you guys soon.